Brass is one of those metals that has a distinct charm. It glows with a warm golden hue and brings a vintage feel to doorknobs, musical instruments, and decorative objects. But if you've ever owned something made of brass, you've probably noticed it doesn't stay shiny forever. Over time, it develops a dull, dark layer, what we call tarnish. But here's the interesting thing, brass doesn't rust. So what's going on here? Why does brass tarnish but not rust? In this video, we're going to dive into the fascinating world of metals, chemistry, and how different materials react to the environment. Whether you're a science nerd, a DIYer, or just curious about the stuff around you, this is a question that opens the door to some cool science. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. To understand why brass tarnishes but doesn't rust, we need to start by understanding what brass actually is. Brass isn't a pure element, it's an alloy. That means it's a mixture of two or more metals. Specifically, brass is made from copper and zinc, typically in a ratio of about 70% copper to 30% zinc. Although the percentages can vary depending on the specific type of brass and its intended use. The combination of these two metals gives brass its signature yellow-gold appearance and makes it more durable and corrosion-resistant than pure copper alone. This blending of properties also affects how brass reacts to air and moisture, which is at the heart of our question today. Let's take a detour into the world of rust. Rust is a very specific kind of corrosion that happens to iron and iron-based alloys like steel. When iron is exposed to oxygen and water, think humid air, rain, or even just the moisture in the atmosphere, it reacts to form iron oxide, which we recognize as rust. This reddish-brown flaky stuff doesn't just look bad, it actually weakens the metal by eating away at it. The key here is that rust only happens to metals that contain iron. No iron, no rust. So since brass doesn't have any iron in it, it physically can't rust. That's why your brass doorknob might darken and get grimy over time, but it won't crumble away like a rusty old nail. Okay, so if brass doesn't rust, why does it still tarnish? What you're seeing when brass tarnishes is a different kind of chemical reaction. When brass is exposed to air, particularly air that contains moisture and pollutants like carbon dioxide or sulfur compounds, the copper in the brass starts to react. It forms a layer of copper oxide on the surface, and sometimes copper sulfide or copper carbonate, depending on the environment. This process is called oxidation, and it's similar in concept to rusting, but the results are very different. Instead of a flaky red-brown crust, tarnish usually appears as a dull, dark film, sometimes with hints of green or black. The green stuff, by the way, is often copper carbonate or copper chloride. Think of the Statue of Liberty, which is made of copper and turned green over time due to this same kind of weathering. There's a really important distinction between tarnish and rust. Tarnish usually forms a thin, stable layer on the surface of a metal. It can actually act as a barrier, slowing down further corrosion. Rust, on the other hand, tends to be porous and flaky, which means it doesn't protect the metal underneath. It just keeps going, layer after layer, until the metal is eaten away. So in a way, tarnish is kind of like nature's way of protecting brass and copper. It might not be pretty, but it doesn't really damage the structure of the metal. That's why brass items can last for centuries, even if they get tarnished along the way. All you need to do is polish them up, and they'll shine like new again. If you want to keep your brass looking shiny, there are a few things you can do. First, limit its exposure to moisture and air. This is why some people apply a clear lacquer or wax coating to brass objects. 
You can also regularly clean and polish your brass items using commercial brass cleaners or even household remedies like a paste made of vinegar, salt, and flour. Lemon juice and baking soda can work too. The key is to gently remove the tarnish without scratching the metal underneath. And fun fact, if you leave some tarnish on purpose, it can actually give the brass a nice antique look, what collectors call a patina. So far, we've mostly talked about the copper and brass, but what about the zinc? Zinc is more reactive than copper, which means it also plays a role in how brass corrodes. In some environments, zinc can leach out of the alloy over time in a process known as desincification. This can weaken the metal and change its appearance, but it typically happens under extreme conditions, like constant exposure to salty water or acidic environments. For most everyday uses, the zinc in brass helps improve strength and reduces the cost compared to pure copper, all while maintaining good corrosion resistance. Brass tarnishes but doesn't rust because it's made of copper and zinc, not iron. Rust is the specific kind of damage that happens to iron when it reacts with oxygen and water, forming iron oxide. Since there's no iron in brass, rust isn't an issue, but brass can and does tarnish thanks to oxidation and exposure to pollutants in the air. This tarnish doesn't destroy the metal though, it just changes how it looks. And with a little care, that dark layer can be cleaned away to reveal the shiny brass underneath. It's one of the reasons brass is such a versatile, long-lasting material, resilient to serious corrosion, while still giving you that classic golden glow. So next time you see a tarnished piece of brass, don't think of it as damaged. Think of it as a sign of history, chemistry, and time. Whether you polish it up or leave the patina intact, you're looking at a material that stood the test of time without crumbling into rust. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.